we start in South Africa, where the country's economy is expected to improve slightly in 2017, but it certainly will be another tough year for the country. We've seen South Africa remain at risk of losing its credit rating status. That, of course, will make the cost of debt higher. But plans are in place to turn the economy around. Sumitra Naido reports that policy implementation and structural reforms need to happen quickly. Growing the economy to create more jobs, creating more political certainty and preventing a credit ratings downgrade will be the top priorities for South Africa in 2017. Growth is looking a touch better and is predicted to improve further in the next year. Things should be slightly better. And the main reason underlying this is the fact that the drought that has beset our economy for the last two years seems to be dissipating. That in turn should result in an improvement of economic growth on its own of between one and one and a half percent. Growth at 1.5 percent is still a far way off to make a dent in the high unemployment rate. At 27.1 percent, unemployment is at its worst level in 13 years. That is insufficient to prevent the unemployment rate from rising. Uh, the labor force is increasing by more than 2% a year, so you need at least that growth to ensure that unemployment does not increase. The economy needs to grow by at least 5% before the National Development Plan can work. Political wrangling has become another setback and might continue until the ruling ANC party's elective conference in December 2017, an issue flagged as a risk to growth by the ratings agencies. I'm not in the camp believing that a ratings downgrade is an inevitability. I think it's something that can be avoided provided we make the right decisions, provided we instill confidence. And politics is a very critical component of instilling confidence. Uh, internationally, because this impacts our ability to deliver on the right policies as well. Behind the scenes, though, there's been increased consultation with business and labor to keep the economy afloat. Government is also keeping a close rein on spending. There's a lot of hard work being done at National Treasury to try and show that we are actually delivering on a fiscal discipline. Uh, we are being prudent about our expenditure. We're trying to curtail uh, uh, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. 2017 will be another tough year. But it will have to be the year for action. Some serious changes need to be made to get this economy back on track. The country's institutions have proved their muscle. It's hoped they will continue to crack down on corruption and mismanagement in order to restore some confidence to Africa's most developed economy. Sumitra Nadu, CGTN, Johannesburg, South Africa. Well, let's get more on that story. Angelo Coppola now joins us in Johannesburg. Angelo, as always, welcome to the show. Now, South Africa barely avoided a cut to junk status last year. We're hearing some experts say a downgrade is inevitable uh, this year. Some uh, don't think that. However, the risk seems to be still very much alive in 2017. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, there appear to be more economists leaning towards South Africa not being downgraded when the next rating agencies pronounce uh, their thoughts in a couple of months. However, the economic growth rates are still expected to be flat for this year with a little spark in 2018. But it's unlikely to shoot the lights out, and that's the problem. The risks do remain high. We will have to wait and see whether the plans developed in 2016, which Sumitra spoke about, are properly implemented and whether they work. One of those projects is to get one million youngsters into business so that they can gain some experience and some exposure. So that's a start. Another issue flagged by the agencies was that of governance in the state-owned entities and whether there is an appetite to get the government businesses back on track. This will, of course, depend on how deep the rot has actually gone. So there are quite a few risk factors that are still having to be finalized before we see any kind of reduction in risk Hmm. Well, Angelo, uh, nevertheless, we did see political infighting uh, definitely playing a big role in stalling South Africa's economic momentum and, of course, reforms in 2016. Can we expect to see these political shocks suppressing growth uh, again this year? Well, political shocks appear to be the norm in South Africa at the moment. And as the ruling party prepares for that National Elective Congress, at the end of the year. There's another Congress happening earlier in the year. It's likely that there'll be more political grandstanding. 
how these leading politicians, those are the ones that are in charge of the economic cluster departments like finance, trade and industry and the like, react to this political infighting remains to be seen. But they would be well advised to take a leaf out of the book of the finance minister, Prabhin Gordon. While he's quick to share credit for starving off that uh, credit ratings agency downgrade that we were expecting in December with some government, and while well, he's sharing that with some government ministers and some big business players in Labour, he's seen as the main reason that South Africa dodged that particular bullet mm. in December. Which mm. year? Well, let's talk about monetary policy. The expectation is uh, that we'll see the South Africa Reserve Bank uh, will continue to be on hold through 2017 and 2018. What, however, is the outlook for the RAND this year? And of course, how will we see it uh, play with monetary policy? Well, Uchiha, we're not expecting those interest rates to, to rise this year. Predictions into 2018, I think, are a little uh, a long way off, and there aren't many that are making any kind of long-term assumptions. In terms of local currency, that's mostly driven by external factors, such as economic growth and pressures in the country's trading partners' environments. Of course, if South Africa experiences another presidential misstep, then the currency will react negatively, and that will take a long time to return to its trend line. And we can see that by what's taken close to a year to happen to the RAND as it came back to its levels prior to December and Nenegate. Mm. Well, many thanks, Angelo, for those insights. Angelo Coppola joining us there in Johannesburg.